design-oriented approach be brought to the idea of democracy? In my view, yes, and this could be one of the possibility to regenerate. So we could imagine something. So, uh, so I forgot something. To, to have this kind of uh, results, there are some balance, exactly because you have to keep together something that could be in contradiction. The balance is in between the effort to get a result and uh, what are the results that you, that you have. And this is, you remember also, Flor was saying, in the trajectory of social innovation, you can start from uh, pioneer, she called it, we call it the social hero, that are uh, committed to make something happen in any case, and afterward, you try to reduce the threshold to make them more affordable, more accessible, to making them more accessible, this kind of strong uh, uh, ethical uh, motivation decreased, and at a certain point you can lost it totally, moving from couch surfing to Airbnb. So in this trajectory, the issue is to, we have to follow the trajectory, because in any case we want to make it more popular, but at the same time without losing totally the elements. And, and this is a design issue, how you can get something that is more accessible, and at the same time something that uh, uh, maintain uh, a part of the social quality that it had at the beginning. Okay, I already said it, and finally, and this is the conclusion and going to, to the beginning, it asks for a redistribution of power. In this case, in some way, people of the group uh, make that the power is distributed. So they do it, also this one. They are not asking, we want to have more power. They create a group that is with the capability to take some decisions. Of course, there are a lot of other decisions that cannot be uh, done uh, following this uh, path, but it's a beginning. It's something that try to help people that become autonomous, that say, okay, at this, we can decide to do this, uh, to follow the example community garden, and we do, without waiting for the community garden or whatever. Um, so, can we call it a new form of participatory democracy? Our hypothesis is yes, and uh, I don't like it so much the term, but uh, the meaning is a democracy that makes more possible to have a richness of different projects that are developed. <coughs> so, a kind of definition could be a democracy where social conversation and the resulting collaboration, collaborative project are triggered and actively supported. So the possibility to have an environment where uh, what we do, for instance, find uh, positive conditions and not as often it happens, something that is uh, negative. And at the same time, a, a democracy, so because it's a double link, that is made more uh, rich and dynamic exactly because there are so many different projects that are thriving in it. And um, a conclusion, I say that uh, from social innovation we have something to learn, that is what I said, but also from social innovation, in particular from design for social innovation, we have also some tools, some methods that can be useful to move in this direction. So what we can learn is not only the most uh, basic, uh, social philosophical issues that I try to recall now, but also honestly that we think that this is really very important, what we have learned in the design for social innovation. That means uh, a toolkit of uh, tools and opportunity and way of dealing with things that I'm not going to go in that now. So this is our story as seen by my point of view. Thank you, Enzo. I know you will, might wonder why we call it philosophy talk, because we tried also to look at philosophy as a lens to research further upon this issue. So very briefly, I will try now if uh, this works. Okay. That is fantastic. 
So I will try to, um, to explain you why we look also at the philosopher Anna Arendt, you're probably familiar with her, because we saw that there are certain similarities be between what Anna Arendt says about democracy and the way in which we're talking about this design-based democracy. So basically, the story of Hetzio is that now designers are working at creating context where people can have conversations for action, but also making more probable for these actions to become real, to have an effect on society. Um, does this work? Okay, I will do like this, it's easier probably. So, this is a new phenomenon, and it's a new phenomenon that needs to be further researched. And if we look at this idea of democracy, and if we look at the human condition in Anna Arendt's book, she also speaks as democracy as a set of discourses that have the capability to be translated in action. And why does this happen according to her? Because there are places in which this happens, in which people can meet and have the sets of conversation. So there are agoras, and she takes as a sample, of course, the democracy in, in, the, in Greece, in Athens, but also because there are certain common interests that are visible. So people know that within common interest, there is also a private interest. And this is one of the key uh, concepts that I think we can kind of use from the philosophy of Anna Arendt, because it somehow, according to me, replies in, in some way to the question that I actually posed, why do people do that? Anna Arendt says that uh, in the development of the Western societies, we forgot uh, that uh, in the public interest, there is also part of my private interest. So I cannot really care for my private interest if I'm totally unconnected from public interest. And she says the word interest in Latin uh, comes from it being in between other people. And this social dimension of interest is something that we totally lost. Yesterday we had a conversation at and I he was saying, in Italy, if you say interest, you immediately think about the private interest and not public interest, probably in English is the same. But this is the root of the word interest. And the interesting thing is that what's happening today, in, so in this case of social innovation, is somehow the people feel again that for pursuing their private interest, they need to be involved also in public interest. So you kind of reconnect again to these roots of the meaning of word interest. And um, of course this binds people together. So people together having conversation because they realize uh, the cities, the government is not gonna solve their problem, they have to do it by themselves. So there is a sort of, a, of healthy selfishness, uh, but there's also an experience of recognizing that actually there is something important in being involved in the public realm because perhaps you are involved in the first instance because you think you can tackle an issue that has to do with your own life, but by doing it, it you also reconnect to the public sphere. And you can do it only if you do it with other people, which is also something that Axio was touching upon. So this binds people together, because people act speaking about these common issues have the capability to act. And why is it so? Because Anna Haren says that the power, the origin of the word power, has to do with this ability to transform words into action. And I think this is also something that Axel was asking, uh, in a sense, and why are people doing that? Perhaps because you experience that in this situation you don't, you don't just talk, eh? like for instance in Italy we have this thing that people go to cafe and talk about politics all the time. This is something different because your talks are meant to be translated into action. So you have this intention that binds you together. And because you know what you're talking about and you know you can do something. So this power to transform words into action is uh, something that it's regenerating. It feels good if you feel like you can really do something. It's not just talking. So I think these are two elements that, uh, from Anna Haren's book, The Human Condition, that can somehow perhaps help us to, to shed some light on some points that Ashley was uh, touching upon. The last thing I wanted to, to, to suggest you to look into is that uh, Anna Haren speak about common sense. And Axel was speaking about civic sense in a positive way, that you can develop a sort of civic sense in which you don't do things because you're forced to or because you have an ideological reason. But
but because perhaps in first instance you feel that there is your own private interest within a bigger public interest. Uh, and Anna Arendt kind of describes this, and she says that the common sense in the past, so again, uh, the Greeks, had to do with the shared perception of common issues. And the perception that behind common issues, there is also your private interest. And this is something, says Anna Arendt, that we totally lost. And the common sense took a very negative connotation, uh, like kind of a doxa, what we take up, she also called doxa, eh? the Greeks, so like the public opinion, but this is something different. According to her, the common sense is really this strong sense, shared sense of uh, everything that has to do with the community, eh? that is visible and that you can tackle by acting and discussing together. And uh, perhaps uh, this can help us, this positive idea of common sense can help us also to identify actions that we can undertake as designers in order to let positive stories of social innovations circulate, uh, to give example, to prototype uh, new ways of interacting together, uh, of uh, creating arenas for this discourse, for actions, so that this common sense can again uh, you know, be something that we experience on a daily basis. And Anharit says that uh, to have an, an uh, understanding of common issues today and to understand that there is something that has to do also with your own life requires today an exceptional work of imagination. So basically she says the poets are the ones they were able to do that, or the artists, but it's very difficult to for citizens to have access to it. So perhaps there's some work there for representation, for artists, for designers, for people that are working in the field in order to make these common issues tangible and to make it become part of common sense so that it becomes a very spontaneous thing to understand that there is something for you for being involved in such initiatives. Okay, this is a very small contribution, just a few lines, but now I give back the microphone for the questions. No? Okay, we do immediately the panel. Okay, so there are some questions that Axel now will uh, uh, introduce to you that has totally to do with this. And I think basically the, the, the key question is why people should be drawn towards this yeah. and, and by, by being involved towards this sort of projects uh, help to regenerate democracy from within. So I left now the floor uh, to Axel for, uh, for, no? Let's go directly to Let's go directly to the one that we invited. Yeah, no, that's why, that's why. I asked all the panelists uh, to, to be here. Uh, as you see, it's a very informal setting. Eh? So please, uh, uh, Lisbeth, Nurul, uh, Will, and Tamar, uh, come here. I will take the chairs from, for you. And uh, Ezio will uh, animate the discussion together. But we will also, Carla and I, will be part of it, and all of us. So please take it in a very informal way, interrupt, interact. So there will be at the end some time also for a more open discussion, but we'll do it the Italian way in a very informal way. <laughs> <laughs> and please, uh, for the panelists, introduce.